Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. So, moving to Okinawa, we've had a little bit more time to head to the beach, which is pretty lucky. Load up the van and head on out. So to add some fun at our beach days, and also to sort of change up a little bit of the training for the ultra marathon I'm doing uh, into some low impact full body workout, I pulled the trigger on a sup. Not just any sup, but the cheapest sup I could find on Amazon. <laughs> now I'm not an expert on sup, but I do have a real extensive background of all paddle sports as I've been pretty much doing it for sport, recreation and even for a job for the last 30 years. I also know a lot about construction of the PVC materials that they use in sub construction through working as a raft guide and rafting and repairing so many rafts over the years. So I'll give you my first impressions and hopefully it can give you a little bit more of an idea if you're trying to make a decision too. I'm pulling the trigger on a sub. Now I didn't want to break the bank as you probably realized from the title and I have a few friends that already have sub companies around Japan and I asked them and they said pretty much anything over 100,000 yen was the norm. Now my financial advisor aka my beautiful wife uh, was definitely not aboard on that plan. <laughs> so I checked out everybody's best friend Amazon and found uh, quite a few cheap boards out there. I did what everyone else does on there. I checked all the reviews, I checked the stars, I checked everything about it. Small fine print and of course finally the price <laughs> which was the cheapest and I chose the Akaway, Akaway, Akaway 10 foot 6 inch sub which at the time was the cheapest board on Amazon. 2 man 8,704 yen or around about 260 US dollars. So the package arrived and you get a bag, a pump, a paddle, a waterproof phone holder, a repair kit, a leash, a fin, and even a warranty. One year I think. So not too bad for under 30,000 yen. Next I pumped it up to the recommended 15 psi and checked for any leaks. And that was, mm, how can you say, uh, a mission. Good though for a bit of training and a warm up to get the blood flowing. Now I kept it up for a couple of hours and just to keep see if there's any pressure changes or any leaks, noticeable leaks that I could find and there was none. Awesome. Construction around the seals actually seems pretty good as this is where a lot of the problems will start if you have a uh, defective sort of anything in PVC. Uh, the seals are generally the worst places for that. And to be honest, I was very surprised at, for the price, the quality of construction you actually get in these. Now the ball was only one part of the equation and I read a few reviews that were not so glowing about the paddle that comes with it. So I was keen to give it the once over and give my view on things. And I was quite surprised with the quality for the price. Uh, by all means, not amazing, but for a three piece shaft, every sort of piece that you add to it weakens the actual shaft in general but for the amount of power that you're going to put through it it was actually pretty good aluminium shaft as well so a little bit heavier but you do get the added strength as well to that there's foam inside so it won't won't sink hopefully it hasn't sunk yet and the blade is a touch flimsy too but compared to something like a full raft with under load in a rapid you're not putting the same amount of torque on the paddle as you would for something a bit bigger like that. Now, the unfortunate thing down here in Okinawa at the moment is that the coronavirus has really put on a little bit of a dampener of going to the beach. A lot of the local authorities have closed parks around the beach, car parks that is, so you can't get access to a lot of the beaches. And it's basically made us have our beach time less and less as this, uh, unfortunately, the COVID has gone on. And that's fair enough. I'm not complaining about that. But the only thing is that I couldn't get enough film for this. So once again, first impressions and I have a little bit of film to sort of help explain a few things of getting on the board for the first time. Now stability is really good, even for a big fella like myself, 100 kgs. And that is due to a six inch thickness of the board and also the 32 inch width of it. Even had the wife and the son on it at the same time and it still handled very, very well. Uh, the paddle held together well, even though there was a bit of flex in it when you put a bit of purchase on it. But other than that, pretty damn good. I'm very impressed for that price. The adjustable paddle was actually really good as well. Has a little groove in it so it doesn't twist in the shaft like that and it's actually really helpful. I uh, saw a lot of the reviews say that uh, the locking clip was their biggest issue. You just need to wind it a little bit more and really get the purchase on that as well 
to get a decent locking mechanism working. Like I said, first impression's good. And when beaches open up, uh, I will get out there a lot more and get some more footage. And also, it'd be actually good. I find a lot of these reviews, hey, I've bought this board, and you're not gonna get the issues with these boards early on. What will happen, maybe six months or a year down the track, you'll finally get the issues that will come out in this board. And it's probably especially on these cheaper versions as well. So, I'll film a bit more, I'll get a bit more data, and I'll do another video at a later date, six months or a year down the track, to show you how it's holding up. So all in all, I give this board definite thumbs up. And if you've got this far in the video, if you could click on the like, that'd be really awesome too. Keep your eyes out for more SUP videos, and of course more training videos for the Ultra Marathon to the end of the year, and I'll see you next week. Bye. Uh. Yeah.